this is one of the things I know that not everybody knows. I know it because of a certain job I have, and the thing is the Dewey Decimal System, the sorting of books, specifically I'd like to say non-fiction books, in most public libraries, a lot of academic libraries, it's not the only system, it's the system that's caught on. Who's Dewey? Melville Dewey was a New York librarian from the late 19th century. He came up with this system. Let me show you its quirks. It involves filing books by a three-digit number with some things after a dot, the a decimal point. Every number has a meaning. Allegedly, every digit has a meaning might be the best way to put it. And as you zoom into the number, you refine that meaning. So the first digit, the hundreds, is a game of overviews, and then the tens refines it a little, the ones refines it a bit more. And after the dash, you're kind of really getting into the nitty that's gritty. It's kind of a good way to point out the flaws of this system, that it starts with computers. Why did Melville Dewey from 18 whatever decide to put computers into the zeros? The answer is, and I learned this through guessing rather than looking it up, but then I looked it up and it confirmed my guess. Love it. He didn't have computers yet, so zero was kind of left blank and filled in afterwards. That means the first thing confronted is what they're calling computer science. I find in the non-fiction section of a public library, parts of this that will have a lot of content will be 004 and maybe 5. Yeah, it's more 5 than 4 because all the Microsoft PowerPoint for dummies, etc. go in there. And those books publish often because those softwares update often, so you can make the old ones redundant just by moving one little thing in the interface. Do know that the idea of the book is thrown in here, which I think is slightly miscalibrated. There's another bit coming up quite soon, it's actually basically on the screen, for books about books. I don't know, I think there's quite a few miscalculations like that in this system, really. If we're gonna give each section an overview header, my library's marquee for this shelf is Curiosities, which is a good way to start. Start with etc. But of all the vague names you can give this, you can just call it general studies. Maybe you can call it knowledge. It then gets on to books about books, books about libraries. There's not many of these really. Encyclopedias clearly have a function until they were replaced by Wikipedia. It's funny what ends up unassigned. Biographies has a place later on. Yeah, a lot of these categories in the small town library where I work aren't actually populated by any content. We're getting onto relevant stuff around 70, books about journalism. You get quite a few here because, of course, there are books by journalists and, like, journalism memoirs. But, like, some of the most interesting stories are technically journalism memoirs, although there's often a better way to categorize it when it's an interesting story, when they've visited a particular place so it can tell the history or the culture of that place. And here I'm describing another inherent flaw of the Dewey Desk system, but I think it would be an inherent flaw of any system. And that's how there's a lot of content that you can define as belonging in two or more different sections, not even neighboring sections. Even these bits don't really have particular value. Let's move on to a more solid section with the very solid science of philosophy and psychology. You ever confused philosophy and psychology. I mean, I know once you actually think what they are, you can distinguish them, although they both involve thinking what they are. But like college departments, the, the P and the Y, the Dewey system doesn't do much to work against the way that you conflate psychology and philosophy. Maybe Dewey himself was conflating them. Note that the first entry in a particular series is like the general entry, so 100 does mean general overview books for this study. And here we've got some reasonably decent subcategorizations of like brainy science, but not neuroscience, that's a different thing. You will notice upon scrolling through some no longer used, maybe in some cases because it ain't politically correct. Although you can say 
it ain't politically correct. I think science just found that it ain't literally correct. That's often what political correctness is, you know? Just being correct about stuff. I don't mind accusing others of wrong thing when what they think, like they got it wrong. For all this no longer use, there's still 138 and 139 there. I've recently learned that these are still used a lot on the internet. Ah. So if you give a shit about these kinds of sciences, I think they're reasonably well subdivided in here. I can relate to this. Also this, and definitely this. It's funny what's not assigned or no longer used. I think Wikipedia doesn't yet know if those were ever used. Wikipedia isn't necessarily the perfect source for this. This page is just convenient to scroll down vertically. And there's ethics, and then there's things from mysterious distant realms like the ancient, the medieval, and the east. You will find evidence of Dewey's position as a white American man in the 19th century. Like, certain cultures were a lot more distant from him, and there was less written on them in the English language. I don't know if he intended this worldwide system, but in the way that it's since caught on, Bits like this could do with a rewrite. Then we've got the important countries of the West. North America, British Isles, Germany and Austria. They've got a lot of 20th century philosophy. Uh, never mind. France, Italy, Spain and Portugal, Russia, Scandinavia and Finland and other. Now there's a whole hundred about a specific kind of bullshit. You'll hear it's semi-sardonic ideas that maybe religious texts should go in the fiction section and a lot that ends up in this religion section probably should shirt, but Dewey's system isn't exactly for distinguishing non-fiction from fiction, although libraries that follow that follow his system, so what's fiction we'll get around to later. There are some fictions kind of in all of these sections. Like, let me just fetch something. Like, this book, written by a fictional comedic character, it's meant to be a travelogue, and thereby we filed it in our non-fiction section where the travelogues are. Right or wrong, that's kind of right by Dewey standards. And do know the many different perspectives and interpretations of the idea of what goes in the religion section are here. So holy texts themselves, criticisms thereof, books about the history of religion, but also those that are about dying children who've seen angels and they're called like heaven is real. Whatever, this is on the topic of religion. Existence is put in the same category as God. The they're opposites. These no longer used just don't present me anything funny to riff on, comment if you can come up with anything. And then, understandably, given who he was and where he was, a lot of it is about Christianity. It's probably worth noting that with the kind of subset ethos of the Dewey system, Christianity was founded as a subset of Judaism. I know it's like eclipsed it and oppressed it, but like the concept of it, the immaculate conception of it, Judaism was influenced by whatever other misfit bullshit they had back then. Now they hate Jews because they didn't go along with the thing that Christians made up. Whatever, from a Dewey perspective, Christianity gets a big section about it. I always find the word apologetics funny, like the whole study of when the logic of your religion is shrinking around you and you're just reaching out in desperation to make it make sense. That's apologetics. I'm sorry. More Christian sections. So they're not even subsets of a Christian section. There's just multiple Christian sections. History of Christianity. All the different contents that Christianity has invaded and told them that white Jesus rules them. Christian denominations. Where are the other religions? We don't have much space for the other religions. They're shoved into 219. Now, Judaism is within 296. Judaism doesn't have that much population. I mean, for, for pretty nasty reason. Really, I think the insulting one is religions of Indic origin. When you look what those religions are, they are multiple massive religions and they are shoved within there. All of those being within 294 doesn't mean we neglect to cover them and like only have one book per library about them. Like the Dewey system doesn't dictate how many books per Dewey number there ought to be. I think to a slight extent it does influence like there's a selection 
selection bias to it. But you do also need to consider how much has been written about this stuff in the English language published by Western publishers. None of that makes excuses for 294 or 297. 298 is a funny one because I do consider Mormonism a form of Christianity and they have plenty of space for that. But maybe that's why it's no longer used. Maybe it's found its place in a different actual Christian section. Religions not provided for elsewhere. I mean, it's nice that they considered them by not considering them, but at least considering that there's something they didn't consider. 300 is the social sciences. These can be somewhat vaguely defined, but less vaguely defined than the very vaguely defined categories that we've had thus far. Really, this is quite a respectable informational section. There's a lot of the stuff I like in 305 and 306, like feminism gets shoved there because he hadn't heard of feminism. I mean... He had not heard of feminism, or he didn't want to hear of feminism. But any kind of emancipation is often in 305, 306. There is something a bit later on about emancipation, but you see a lot of it in 305, 306. And these aged definitions just make it a little more difficult to browse, but it's still alright. 300 isn't that bad or offensive or anything. Economics and law. Now, criminology is a fat one, so people love true crime. People love crime fiction. People love the idea of criming. Education, including its fairly no longer used subset, the education of women. And yet, yeah, ethical education, like teaching people particular morals. Concepts that we'd like to say have faded out, but now that commerce is in a kind of trade and logistics definition, we've already had economics and this late section for business studies. This stuff makes sense. Customs, etiquette, and folklore is a bit of a curveball after those other social sciences, but it still is a social science. 397 is where we are. 396. Maybe you could still do with some entries, I don't know. Folklore obviously blends into religion. I've realized one thing from the zeros that I didn't say maybe because it's not really listed. Shit about aliens and like conspiracy theories in this particular regard get shoved up into a particular zero. Look at that, it's in controversial knowledge. Language, the shapes thereof, and then different languages. Again, a Western bias and like put in English not as a subset of Germanic languages. I don't know if Dewey knew that stuff. He knew a decent amount about language, so European languages and their subsets, you know where this is going. So you know that a nine section at the end has other and often includes a much wider array, but it was the cultural ignorance at the time. There was a vested interest, however, subliminal to not describe those as much. Within these nine sections. A fun one that can often come at the end is references to Australia and Oceania, which is often a nine within a nine. 499 is Oceania, Austronesian, miscellaneous. From Dewey's perspective, that was far enough away that it may as well be miscellaneous. It's just the one you just about remember just at the end, and it's like, oh yeah, don't forget tears. Sciences. Maths is a science, we can take that. Astronomy and physics. Chemistry and geology. Biology is a funny one because there's something else that's upcoming. And like there's a subset of what they're calling biology that's about plants. And then there's a bit called plants. Maybe Balbin put the plant there. I can't really make a biased comment about this 599 because mammalia, the one with humans in, is the 99. They just thought of each kind of animal and then realized at the end, oh yeah, mammals. Technology. So obviously technology progresses a lot and Dewey didn't know which way technology was going. Computers have been thrown in at the start. Maybe there's a good argument for them to be within technology, but maybe there's not really an appropriate space for them. Again, not that these numbers have uniform width, but just like a space of categorization. Maybe everything here is kind of used up. I think I disagree by the time we get to medicine 
and health. So you can call medicine a technology, but it's when anatomy becomes a technology. Maybe anatomy was discovered via technology, but it's clearly a biology. Considering how health is one of the most prominent sections, the fact that it gets categorized under technology is a much use. If you're no longer using experimental medicine, you're lost. Engineering agriculture. Home and family management is a strange definition of technology, and when you see what's within here, so a large one, food and drink, cookbooks, books about food, are within the subsection of technology. Again, you might prepare the food via technology, but there's not a good argument for food to be within technology. The argument is just, it's already been put there and we're used to it. Management doesn't really make sense as a technology, that's a sociology thing. So this is kind of what I've been calling business studies. It's strange, what's accounting doing here? We've already had economics. Maybe this is economics within the idea of business studies. I don't know, all this stuff harms us, so. The alleged number of the beast contains pottery, although that's not the actual historic number of the beast, not that the beast had a number, not that there's a beast. What's 616? Oh, I know what 616 is, because it's a big health one. Materials and shit, whatever, it roughly makes sense. It would have been useful to put computing in here, and some of these whole tens are strange to call technology. Arts. It does say arts and recreation. Arts and recreation theme tune. So you've got general overview works, you've got architecture, then the things we more traditionally understand as art, starting with sculpture. When there's like a collection of all of an artist's works, it may share the Dewey Code of a collection of all of a different artist's works. There's a strong and completely vindicated argument for putting those in alphabetical order rather than Dewey order. Kinds of printing, photography, because that was kind of emerging at the time of Dewey. Arguably a sharp turn into music, but it is an arts. Strict Deweyism may well categorize like sheet music, not that we stock sheet music anymore, and even audio CDs, not that we stock audio CDs anymore, in the same place as the books that are about music, about instruments, about composers, musicians. And then sport is quite different, but they've just decided there was space and sport doesn't need that much space so it can go here. It's funny that technically walking can be called a sport, so books on walking routes might be within the sports category. Literature is obviously a funny one because most of its content is going to be fiction and where I work the fiction is obviously sequestered from the non-fiction and we don't bother sorting the fiction by Dewey order. The Dewey system is an info library numbering system because nearly all of our popular public consumer fiction content would be under 823 so there's no point putting that on the side. Obviously people are going to browse by author's surname maybe by genre, and the Dewey system before the decimal point doesn't even really get into genre all that much. So books about literature, of course they go in non-fiction, but an odd one from my perspective is things like Shakespeare, so the printed plays of Shakespeare, obviously where it's a fiction, even those based on real history, easy to categorize those as fiction, but because it's a separate format, we end up putting it in non-fiction. Same is true of poetry, which you could argue could go under the arts. So this format distinction, what makes something separate from fiction, gets it put separately from fiction, even if mm, kind of is fiction. <laughs> I've already said this in the religion section. Ah yes, the two separate categories, American and English. Because see, the other ones are filed by their language, but you could say they're filed by their country, it's just the USA is a much younger country, settled within the largely English culture, I know lots of other cultures contributed, but it was Dewey's choice and he had the room to make that separate, and it probably would have pissed off some of his neighbours if he didn't. Some further languages... So, yeah, of course, it's staying within Europe. Classical often has its own section, like old school stuff, separate from contemporary stuff, very understandably. And then the good old other places, including Australia and miscellaneous. You could point out that he's doing the old treat Africa as if it's a homogenous culture when it's a massive continent thing, and he is doing that, but he's still doing nearly the same to some other places. 
Putting history and geography together doesn't make entire sense. This first ten in history, maybe it's just how we shelve it, but it comes out really odd, because it's a history section, and really it starts later on, but then there's these curiosities near the start. I guess you can call them general overview. You know, it is a consistent system. The start of a category has the more general versions. And then geography emerges as a subset, and let's just point this out right now, Australasia, all the islands, Antarctica, and extraterrestrial worlds all get to share one number. You're welcome. I guess it says something that this American man put Europe before the Americas, and put other lands before the Americas, and I guess you've got ancient worlds there. Maybe this is that whole old world, new world thing. And then the mysterious future world of all other planets, like maybe even Australia. Biography is a good and obvious section to put as a separate thing where you file it alphabetically. In fact, even the system permits for that, but we don't do it that way. We just say 920 and then the surname. Note how the numbers line up. So 913 is travel in the ancient world. Good luck. And then the history of the ancient world is 930. 914 is Europe. 940 is history of Europe. That's quite elegant. Then he fucks up that elegance by having England and Wales be a separate rather than a subset of British Isles. They're obviously a subset. I don't know if at the time they existed separately and they've been placed atop the British Isles. I need to learn more history. Same old biases, you know, there is an other that will technically cover a reasonably large area with a reasonably large population, but it's just what had been written about and understood at the time, which does slightly affect contemporary libraries. You know, there is a baked-in bias, but only really to a microscopic extent. Of the continents, it actually observes that Africa has subdivisions. I guess he's done the same old thing by having a United States and then separate bits of the United States, but those don't really get used. It's about 973. I mean, maybe they get used in libraries in those locations. Now, of course, we have a local studies section, and I am in, I'll give you this much, I am in either England or Wales. Local studies can be quite farcical on the Dewey system because it's a separate section of the shelves, and it runs its own way from the zeros to the 999s. Not that there's much in zeros at all, I can't immediately think of one, but yeah, there'll be something in the lower numbers, there'll be something in maybe the 200s about local religion, the high 300s about culture and customs, there'll be things about architecture and infrastructure, but nearly everything in the local studies section has the not really that helpful Dewey number of 942 point, and then the specific numbers that refer to this particular location. So trying to sort out an order for these books while respecting the Dewey system just makes this massive traffic jam of hundreds of books on end with the same 942 point and then at least the same first three post-decimal point digits. Probably if we bothered putting the extra digits, they'd still match up. So we have to come up with our own means of sorting these, but it's hell to keep on top of. So the number of digits after the point can go on and on as it gets more specific. Specific. I'm sure there are categorizations of this book, maybe not a perfect example, but it's the one I've got, where you could put further digits after the two and they would refine further the categorization of this particular book. So this refers to travel within the UK, and then 1092 will be a particular area. Asia, Africa, North America, South America, other areas, the mysterious, some of which have even been removed from the map. So here's the extraterrestrial worlds, much like Australia, and extraterrestrial worlds actually have their own section, which is the very last one there. Honestly, I don't think we have any history books in on extraterrestrial worlds. If we're referring to other planets, they would be in a science section. It would be 520-ish. So that's roughly how the system works, and the system roughly works. I consider the Dewey system kind of nearly functionally antiquated, but it's still just widely used, and it would take a widespread blanket decision across the English-speaking world to move on to something better. And there are ideas that are probably better, but 
They're also influenced by the Dewey system, like it's helpful. A great reason to overthrow the Dewey system is that it's somehow in copyright, so you gotta pay to use it. Fuck that. Look, here's a lamp to the left of a harmonica. You gonna sue me? I can't think of one means the English-speaking world might decide to get rid of the Dewey system. It's called cancellation. So Dewey was a fascinating fella, although I say that from the perspective of not wearing a skirt, because, you know, if I was someone who wore a skirt, I mean, it might grow up underneath it. I'm working on an Oscar-winning biopic of Dewey, and he's going to be played by Christian Bale. Watch out for that. I think that would work. But it would start with the ridiculous anecdotes that even as a child, he was kind of addicted to sorting things into order. It was just exactly what he wanted to do. So there Christian Bale in Babyface kind of piling up some blocks in alphabetical order or maybe just topic order. Uh, but when Baby Bale Dewey breastfeeds, he gets this glint in his eye and it tells us something that might become relevant later on. Melville Dewey was a horrible character toward women and this was even commented at the time. This isn't me casting modern standards upon him. Standards at the time knew it. He was real handsy with the women who worked for him in New York libraries, etc. But you do need to learn that within the grander context, you zoom out to the digit that's like a factor of 10 up from that and find, you know how you think of librarianship as a woman's job. At least in North America, that happened due to campaigns from Melville Dewey. He set up, like, bursaries to get women working in libraries, and that served pretty well for the emancipation of women, although he kinda did it so he could fondle them. Yeah, it ain't that simple, because nothing's that simple. History is complex. He also had a history of racism that itself was commented at the time. Again, not just me casting current standards back on it, although even if it was just me doing that, it might still be relevant. His actual contemporary attitudes to Jews and people of other races were not justifiable. So he was horrid, he was also kind of a massive positive influence, you know, libraries rule, but he was also hella cookie. You see why this is a Christian Bale role, right? Among other eccentricities, he insisted upon reforming English spelling, and I think he had a hella good point there. He insisted on it to the extent that he changed his name from Melville Dewey to Melville Dewey with the silent letters removed. And I kinda admire the efficiency there. Compare it to other languages, especially other European languages, which Dewey would like, but I'm saying that because they use the same alphabet. Like, in most languages that use that alphabet, every particular letter makes a particular sound except in very rare circumstances, so it reads as a code to the sound of the word. English, because it's amassed from so many different sources, and it's mutated and invaded so many different places, does not have that elegant uniformity to it. And the reformed spelling movement was a good idea to bring in some uniformity, and like, encourage a lot more neatness. We've written a lot since, and it just didn't catch on. A fun thing about his name change, though, you've seen the Melville part. He also tried to get his surname changed from D-E-W-E-Y to D-U-I, which I know is funny in the modern era, but at the time that was just a means of spelling the sound of Dewey. And that also makes a lot of sense, but it's also hella funny. It didn't catch on. I don't know if he'd already had too much published with the original wasteful spelling of his surname, or maybe even the name change was rejected, but you will find out out in the upcoming Christian Bell smash. Who is Dewey? Here's some further resources. The legally distinct Melville Decimal System to explosh is a very convenient and intuitive means to browse these definitions. I mean, open source definitions that happen to be identical with cute emoji, look it. It even has names for some of the sections Wikipedia called unassigned. It's cool to dig around, dig in, see how each click gets more specific entries. OCLCs classify ain't anywhere near as good 
code, but is a means of assessing consensus for where a particular item should be filed. Right, thanks for watching. I don't do unscripted stuff much, but I figured this is one thing I generally know about, and I was testing my tech a bit. I'll still be testing my tech a bit in the edit. Thanks for getting through this. I swear most of my content is more, like, refined. Dewey would be proud, but he's not someone I want to make proud.